Um, journalist and writer Phaedra Greenwood is here today to speak about the controversial topic of so-called cattle mutilations and UFOs. Phaedra is a freelance writer and videographer whose essays, stories, and reviews have won awards from a number of literary magazines. Her memoir, Beside the Rio Hondo, published by Sunstone Press, was a finalist for the New Mexico 2008 Book Award. She has also self-published a travel memoir called North for the Spring, and as a journalist and columnist for the Taos News, she received two first place awards from the New Mexico Press Association for best columns and best review. From 1996 to 2000, Greenwood was the only reporter in Taos to be invited to the crime scene by the investigative team looking into unexplained animal deaths, UADs. She wrote many news articles about cattle mutilations and UFOs and is recognized for her knowledge and expertise in this area. She worked closely with former district attorney and current district court judge, John Paternoster, who organized the team. Greenwood has written a book about her theories and her field experience. Please join me in welcoming Phaedra today. Start, I want to start with um, just telling you a little bit about the phenomenon that's called cow mutilations. I completely disagree with um, that title, that description, because in every case of a classic mutilation that I've seen, I wouldn't call it mutilated in any way. The, the surgery that's done on these animals looks very deliberate, very clean. Uh, the animal seems to have died peacefully. There's never any signs of struggle. And so I don't call them mutilations. Other people do, and it'll be in this manuscript. But I call them unusual animal deaths, or strange animal deaths, because they are strange. And they have happened all over this country, and other countries too, um, at least 10,000 probably more since I last stopped investigating it. And not only cattle, but as you see, horses also, and dogs and cats and sheep and pigs, and mostly domestic animals, but also bison and deer. And this has been going on for a really long time, and there have been huge rewards offered. Um, up in Colorado, the state of Colorado, offered a $50,000 reward for anyone who could, you know, give them information leading to um, the arrest of anybody caught doing this. Isn't it strange that nobody has ever been caught doing this? Um, our former DA, John Paternoster, used to say there's no such thing as a perfect crime, but whoever is doing it or whoever or whatever is doing it must be doing what is close to the perfect crime because they've never gotten caught. Nobody has ever gotten caught. We only have one that has ever been witnessed, and I have this story on it, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, it's interesting that somebody actually did, somebody was actually there, somebody actually saw it, or so they say. We don't know. A lot of it is, a lot of these stories are anecdotal. All we really have to go on is the animal, is the lab result, is what you see before your eyes. And for the five years that I was at the Taos News, I was a reporter and I also worked at the sheriff, I also worked on the blotter. I went to the sheriff's office to get information to enter into the blotter. So I kind of kept track of what was going on. And as this thing unfolded, there were just more and more stories, and more and more coincidental things, more synchronicity, and more and more weirdness, until I actually got spooked, and so did my editor. <laughs> and she finally told me, I don't want another story on cow mutilations unless they find a cow up in the tree. And that was pretty much it. We never did find a cow up in a tree. I stopped writing the stories. And 
I left the paper in 2000. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they've ever run another story on Calvin relations since 2000, since I left. And it strikes me as really strange. It couldn't have all just stopped dead. Dead, if you'll forgive the, the expression. There are ongoing cases up in Colorado, and I'm sure there are in other places too. So let's just start with Snoopy the Horse. Snoopy the Horse. This happened a long time ago, 1967, but she was the first uh, animal that was supposedly mutilated that made national headlines. And because the woman who owned the horse um, told the Valley Courier in Colorado near Alamosa, um, a UFO killed my horse. And it was so dramatic that it made national headlines. And part of the reason that she said that is because this mare was found a um, 100 yards from where its tracks stopped. And there was no explanation. It, there were three horses. They were running flat out. They were galloping. This one horse veered off and was found 100 yards from its tracks. And there were a lot of other strange things about it, too. Um, the night before this happened, um, oh, this was on the, um, the King Ranch, the Harry King Ranch near Alamosa. And the horse belonged to Nellie Lewis, who was Harry King's sister. And Agnes King was his mother, an 85-year-old widow, who the night before the incident said she heard something flying over the house and she went to the door. She couldn't see what it was, but she said it was bright aluminum at treetop level. Notice that she said she heard something flying over the house. Uh, normally UFOs are, are notoriously silent, but maybe it wasn't a UFO. Uh, one thing that's often connected with this phenomenon are black helicopters. And there was a long debate years ago about whether or not black helicopters actually existed. And I can assure you that they do, because I've seen them myself and photographed them on the ground. <laughs> um, so when this mirror was found, um, she had all the flesh removed from her head down to her neck, like you see it in the photograph. That is the, the original skeleton of the horse. The rest of the body was pretty much intact. Um, and the bones looked like they do in that photograph. They were bare. They looked like they were sun bleached. They looked like, and this was like overnight. All the flesh was taken off of it from the nose to the neck. And everybody was just astonished because nobody could figure out what happened. 40 or 50 feet from the body, investigators found burn marks, blackened areas on the ground, and an increase in radiation for about two city blocks. So that was one of the hallmarks of cow mutilations is they always tested for radiation. Um, there happened to be a pathologist and hematologist in the area uh, they snagged him out of the sand dunes where he was camping, looking for UFOs. He got in more trouble than he ever imagined he was going to. And they took him to see this, the body of this horse and do a necropsy on it, which he was capable of doing. He worked um, in that field, and he worked for hospitals. And he was a pathologist. So they took him back there, and he did a necropsy on Snippy whose real name was Lady, by the way. We got that mixed up right at the beginning. And he was surprised to find that the mare's skull was empty and the spinal column was dry. Um, this was 10 days later, but that's not long enough to dry up a brain. <laughs> and that's what he found. He also, he's also quoted as saying there were no organs inside the animal. Uh, the horse's heart, the lungs, and the thyroid were gone. The heart, the lungs, and the thyroid were gone. They were just missing. Um, later, he retracted that statement because his his um, his school put some pressure on him, and he didn't want to lose his credibility with the hospitals he worked for. So we will never really know. <laughs> To any 
I, I have about 17 different versions of this story, and I tried to put them into something that was as close to the truth as I could get it. But at this late date, we'll probably never really know. And now he's, he died a, a few years ago, and we'll never really know what happened. I called him once and tried to get him to tell me, you know, what really happened. There were the organs really missing, was the brain really missing. But he wouldn't come to the phones, and I don't blame him. He's probably sick and tired of the whole thing. Um, a local veterinarian who cleaned and mounted Smithy's skeleton said he found two bullet holes in her pelvis. Uh, made probably made from a 22. It does seem strange that if that was in the horse when they investigated, when this teams of investigators came, they wouldn't have noticed. So it makes you think that probably that happened later on, but we don't really know. Um, then, Al Schuler, um, there's enough, he, he apparently told a woman named Linda Moulton Howe was one of the key investigators of these, this phenomenon. How many people have ever heard of Linda Moulton Howe? You have? Okay. So he told her that he was scared to death at the time um, at what he found, and he was overwhelmed by the experience, afraid, afraid he would lose credibility with the medical community. Nevertheless, he did agree to do some talk shows and some public speaking events, and According to journalist and private investigator David Perkins, who wrote for the Taos Magazine for many years about this phenomenon, um, Dr. Altshuler was speaking at a MUFON group in Denver, and he told them he was an abductee. So that sounds really weird to me. If this guy was afraid of losing credibility, then he goes to a conference and he tells them he's an abductee. I don't know what I don't know what to believe. So. This is very much up for grabs, a lot of it. I, I narrow it down, I compare the versions, and I compare it to the reports and what I actually know myself, and try to get at the truth. But the truth in this case is very elusive, so you're going to have to make up your own mind <laughs> and decide for yourself, because I can't tell you. I don't know. Um, at the same time, these are all the key players, David Perkins, Dr. Altshuler, Lynn Moulton Howe, they're all investigators. Um, and into it at this point comes uh, Altshuler sent a letter to veterinarians around the country soliciting their cooperation in cattle mutilation research. And this was supposedly funded by a grant from the Bigelow Foundation. Anybody ever heard of the Bigelow Foundation? In conjunction with Rockefeller. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Altshuler said he was willing to fly to the location of a mutilated animal and aid with the necropsy. So, there you have 